Um, as all of you would remember, this is the original E-Class. Um, it's actually more of a C-Class size. Um, it's called the Pontoon, the W120. Uh, um, back then, um, the E-Class is still what the E-Class is today. Yeah? When it started out, the E-Class started out as uh, um, the best business sedan in the world. And through the years, tradition has kept it still the best business sedan in the world. Now, with every generation of E-Class, you will notice that you will see a sedan, you will see a coupe, even in the 115s. Um, if you remember the 123, um, a very nice old picture of the 123 here. There was also a coupe version of the 123, the C123. Um, you still see lots of these cars on the road. Um, remember the 124? Uh, most of you um, would have seen all these things back in the 80s, even in the early 90s, and even today we see tons of them on the road. These cars were over-engineered, um, they had a lot of development put in, things that cannot be done um, anymore these days. Yeah. In the 124 Coupe, um, we didn't see a lot of these around, but these were um, fantastic cars to drive. Again, you'll see the pillarless design on the B-pillar carrying on um, ever since the 50s. The W210 came out in the 90s. Um, this was where the design began for the, the four-eyed look on the car. Yeah? And of course, there was again the coupe version. This was when it was first called the CLK. And later on came the 211, the E-Class that we all see today. Um, now, with this 211, incidentally, it was built um, it, it, when it was built, it was actually given an award, the first ever award um, of the Euro car body. Yeah? It is an award that is given in, in Europe for cars that are built with things like aerodynamics in mind, design in mind, and safety in mind. So these awards are given to those who excel um, in these areas for building cars. Now, when the Euro car body awards came out, this car won the very first Euro car body awards. Yeah? So it's only fitting that when we come to the new E-Class, the W212, I'm happy to announce that just about a week ago, we won the Euro Car Body Awards for 2009 as well for the new E-Class. Yeah? Now, when, when you're building an E-Class, what you're building is really a masterpiece. And it's, you might say that it's not too hard to build a car these days. Everybody can build a good car. Um, but when you're building a masterpiece, it takes just about 90% more effort. Now, we're looking at building the world's best business sedan. You've got to start from having a great design. A design that shows modernity infused with heritage. You've got to have um, status. It's got to show prestige. Um, the car must have power and it must represent power in its design. It must be individual. To support that, you need to have comfort. These are one of the main pillars of our cars, the comfort, the luxury, um, and it has to be a leader in comfort. Following that, you must also have safety. Um, safety, as Florian always says, safety is a given. Yeah? We don't advertise safety. The reason for that is because in our customer, to our customers' eyes, um, safety is necessary. Safety is expected of our cars. So it is not just a feature that we want to sell. It is something that's expected. And underlying all these, to make the best business sedan in the world, it's nothing if it doesn't come with reliability as well. So these are the main um, key messages of the new E-Class. And it's the same key messages of the previous E-Class and the one before that. And that's why we keep building the best business sedan in the world. Now, from the design sketches, you could see that the idea behind these these new E-Classes, the E-Class Coupe and the E-Class Sedan, is to build a very dynamic car, a very bold car, a car that is confident in its design, a car that doesn't need to follow. You will notice that from the front, um, you will see a very keen arrow shape all the way here. Um, the arrow shape styling bonnet, it goes from the back, it goes sharp all the way to the front. Um, the car still maintains a very broad dimension, but you will notice that there is an arrow shaped front end to give it a very dynamic look. Secondly, you will see the new um, reinterpretation of the four-eyed design. And this is, 
it's a, it's a new, um, slightly cubistic kind of look to it. Yeah, the new design of the headlamps. Next, you have the very bold, very upright grill. It's a very proud grill, very confident in its own skin. Um, again, it reflects the person driving it. And you'll see the LED daytime running lights, which is a very nice um, cosmetic feature, I would say. It look, makes the car look very good. But on the other hand, it's also a safety requirement and it is a good safety feature to be seen clearly on the road. Now, along the side of the car, you will see some very, very interesting lines. You probably already see it, but let me just point it out. First of all, you have the very high waistline, the very high belt line. You sit in the car later, you will notice that the doors are actually pretty high up. Yeah, it feels pretty high up. You feel very cushioned, you feel very secure in the car. Now, that's one of the features. You will see a line that runs from the back all the way down to the shut lines in front. Yeah, this is one of the main um, design lines of the car. The second design line is a switch line that goes um, from the middle of the door past the door handles so it breaks the monotony of the door handles and it goes all the way down and continues right up to the front bumper all the way down here and it ends here yeah so these are the two main design lines and finally there is one major feature if you remember the pontoon um, the w120 you will notice that the pontoon was called the pontoon because of the pontoons at the back these these bulges that look like pontoons now, this is a reinterpretation. You will see the DNA of Mercedes-Benz in, in the W212, the DNA of an E-Class in the W212. Um, this is no longer a pontoon. This is designed after the knee of a runner who is at the start position, ready to pounce forward. Yeah? The next line that you will see is, this is a minor line. Um, these are the chrome garnishes that runs down from the rear bumper all the way down to the front. Um, and in the elegance line, you will also see Chrome garnishes in front here. This is the avant garde. Great. The E Class Coupe, um, a really sexy car, lovely car to drive. You will notice that in Malaysia we will be bringing in the avant garde um, design and also it comes in the AMG Sports package um, only because our Malaysian customers deserve only the best from us. Um, you'll notice that they all come with the panoramic sunroof. Yeah. And this car, even without all those things, it has a very sleek design. It shares the same arrow-shaped dynamic design. It looks like a large wedge from the top, yeah? leading to a very narrow end in front. From the back, for those of you who appreciate um, manufacturing excellence, take a close look at the tail lamps on the back. You will notice, um, and again, if you do appreciate these things, you will notice how difficult it is to actually build this complex tail lamp cluster. Um, it's very deep, it has a very large 3D effect. Everything looks like it's floating inside with LED tail lamps. You'll see the same um, design ideology in the E-Class Coupe from behind. Um, again, in line with E-Class Coupes, you see a pillarless B-pillar over here. Yeah? So the B-pillar is not there. Yeah? You can actually wind down the front and rear windows and they wind down completely flat and you can just run your hand through it. So it gives even the rear passengers and you can fit actually rear passengers into this car and they will feel like it's very airy in combination with the um, panoramic sunroof. Now, the only definition of um, comfort and sophistication can only be experienced inside a car. You'll notice that in the new E-Class, especially at night, you will notice this. Um, it comes with ambient lighting all around. Very similar to the S-Class, you'll see ambient lighting around the doors, under the, um, uh, uh, on the floor. You will see ambient lighting across the dashboard. Now, the whole idea behind this ambient lighting is, first of all, to reduce fatigue. When, you have, when you're driving at night um, and it's dark all around, especially inside your car, your iris actually opens up. Yeah. Um, it gets a bit diluted, and when you have cars coming by, it shrinks and it opens again. So every time you see headlights or any lights, it shrinks and opens. So this, this, get, this adds to fatigue. Yeah? So one of the good things about ambient lighting is that it keeps your iris at a slightly more, um, a slightly more closed situation, and there is less movement, less tired for the driver. 